ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. Good morning, John. Good morning, Jim. I'm Peggy Burton. And I'm Jim Puller, and I'm glad to see you guys. And it's you cool too. Out. Yeah. Cool Peggy's out. got some shoulders <laughs> showing today. Yeah, John and I, I like that. That's the weirdest thing you ever saw. I, I will not be able to stand it till I sew it back together. <laughs> No. Well, that's 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 well, the big it, style right no, now. Well, I don't personally like it. I just you know. Why'd you buy it? I then? don't know. It's just one of those, <laughs> <laughs> just one of those things. One of those things got you pearls yeah, on. I love all those for pearls. For a minute, I liked it, but I don't know. Seeing it on TV, it's not <laughs> as striking as I thought it ought to be. Well, oh, well, John and I think it looks really good. Thank you. Yeah. That's any console. Those shoulders, good to see. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Put cold your up. head it's, on it's, my it's shoulder. It's a cold shoulder. <laughs> it's a cold shoulder. <laughs> Peggy's going to give you the cold shoulder yeah. today, folks. I guess you're excited that the Titans won. Well, you know, I, I was glad to see Mariota back on the field. He's still, he still cobbled up a little bit, but mm-hmm. he sure can throw a football. He sure can, and that team, they need him bad on that team. They oh, they really do. do. They yeah. do. And it's amazing, just like last night when part of that was showing, they were showing the numbers where when the, when the premier quarterback is playing versus when he's not playing, and how how uh, you know when it, when the, when he's playing they win seventy percent of their ball games or they score thirty five points a game and when he's not playing they score twelve points a game yeah you know then and, you and Aaron Rodgers who's one of the premier quarterbacks in in the National Football League tore shoulder up mm-hmm. and so he's out probably for the year oh yeah and that that team I mean he is that team right right. He's the one who – he's the magic he part the, of that whole deal. He could be the best quarterback in the game right now. Oh, yeah, he is. You know, so. Brady's kind of waning a little bit, right. but uh, and uh, but he How is. Brady? 40 or 39. He's, he's 39. 39 or 40, yeah. Well, he's so. – 50, oh, not 52. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, speaking of the age of quarterbacks, do you remember George Blanda? Yeah. You remember he he was a kicker and a quarterback, and he played, I think, until he was 46. Wow. Yeah, he wasn't quarterbacking, though. He was kicking. He, he was kicking primarily, but I'm, I think in one of the, his last two years, though, their quarterback, he played at the Oakland Raiders. Right, and got and hurt. He got hurt, and they had to put him in at quarterback, and he did and a decent still do it. Yeah, he I bet old Brett job. Favre could still sling one. I bet he could. I bet he could. <clears throat> and, you know, Brett Favre, for one, I mean, I, it's pretty cool how they do that. If you've ever gotten to that level, uh, and the same is with uh, Cutler in Miami, you know, they're paying him $10 million dollars. This year, he was in retirement. Just to be there. Wow. Yeah, and uh, he, and he won he, a ball game. Yeah, he won a ball game this week, and he Beat gets ten well. million. Ten and million I, dollars. I right. think Brett Favre got paid twelve million yeah. a year. He played for three different teams after he left yeah. the Packers. Well, I mean, and Peyton went to Denver for what three years? Yeah, at nineteen million. At nineteen million dollars a year. <laughs> yeah. And now Peyton's showing up all over TV. Peyton's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's everywhere. <laughs> he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. He's living the good life right now. Speaking about Peyton makes me think about Tennessee. Yeah, it does. How are you going to? Give me that transition. <laughs> bye, bye, Butchie. Goodbye. <laughs> don't cry, Butchie. Don't cry. You sold us a house of bricks, then delivered straw and sticks. So bye bye Butchie <laughs> goodbye. Thank you, John. <laughs> Butch had a couple of good years. Though. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, we wouldn't be laughing about this if it was an ordinary person that probably got lost right. some jobs. But uh, yeah, that's you know, tough. Uh, these guys get paid a bunch of money, and you, you got to produce at that point. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and as we've said before, you know, the big deal is is these guys. If they can't beat Nick Saban in Alabama, they got about five years and they're out of here. Yeah. They can have a 10-win season, 11-win season. They don't beat Nick, they're gone. I think the ironic thing about this, and a lot of people would disagree with me, but uh, I think the ironic thing about this is, you know, Fulmer spent 30 years at the university as a player and a coach and a head coach. You know, they fired him 10 years ago. We haven't had any success on a consistent basis no, since no, then. Uh-huh. You know, you know but, uh, not at all. You know, there's so. a lot of pressure on, the, on them. You know, it oh, seems yeah. simple to us, but I, I'll tell you what. Uh, we had Becky Buller. I say we because I feel like I'm involved with a lot of stuff that goes on at South Jackson Civic Center this past weekend, and Becky 
Uh, we'll have some video of her on today's show. She's at the top of the International Bluegrass Music Association, and it was probably as professional a show as I've ever seen. It was wonderful. They were absolutely, she has players that are just A-list players that have their own albums. Right. Every player that plays with her has their own material and their own stuff, and it was just incredible, the professionalism of how they put that show together. It was great. And how good it was. I was very proud of that. That opened our Performing Arts series, mm -hmm. which I put together, and I hope people are going to recognize the fact that we do bring in a lot of good quality Top performers. Notch. Our Top next notch. one in the season is... Uh, the tribute to the Beatles, The Return, and that's November 4th. That's the next series piece. Speaking of that, I saw a, a documentary the other day uh, about a woman named Frida. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and Frida was the girl who was their personal assistant the, to the, oh, Beatles. the Beatles. Oh, yeah. you're on the Beatles. I was thinking about Big Frida. <laughs> I don't know no, no, she was. She was the the she when they first got started. She's the one that started their fan club, mm -hmm. and she was like eighteen, seventeen, eighteen years old, yeah. and she was so together about operation. She had such operational skills for a young person that they put her in charge of all of their personal stuff. She she took care of scheduling all of their families. And where their families could stay, and what you know, all these meets and stuff that they did. Frida was in charge, That's it and she was younger than all of them. Yeah. And it was, and and she was on this documentary as a as a a woman our age. Yeah. And uh, it was absolutely amazing. That and is if you ever get an opportunity to see that, I don't know what the title of it is, but it was very, very, very interesting. Good old Frida. Huh? Good old Frida. Good old Frida? Yeah. That's the okay. name. Oh, you Thank made, you, Andrew. You made that up, Andrew. No, no, Andrew. <laughs> if, if, if Andrew says it, it's usually it's true. true. Yeah, yeah. You know, you may That's not, a smart you, kid right there. You may be surprised, but Andrew really knows stuff. A lot of stuff. He reads a lot. And reads Andrew, like, Andrew knows, knows stuff. stuff. He yeah. really does. Yeah. yeah. Obscure and obtuse facts are rolling around in that <laughs> square head of his. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He's so, a keeper. Yeah, He's a keeper, yeah. I love to hear him speak. <clears throat> oh, yeah, he has a great voice. He yes, has a great voice wonderful. for commercials. And the guy that was with Becky Buller on the banjo, banjo. yeah. What a good vocal line he had. Oh, well, he's a radio man. Yeah, he's, I think yeah. he's on XM Radio. He, he was so good. And uh, his voice, you know, and they did all these commercials, and he would come in front of the microphone, and they, they were playing songs about their merchandise and stuff. And uh, it was just a delightful show. And they mm -hmm. kidded with each other. And, of course, Becky's like a comic book character to me. She's She puts those high heels on. She's 12 feet tall. <laughs> Her hair's 5 feet wide. <laughs> And uh, she's, a gorgeous and she's girl. incredibly talented. Yeah, really has is. a great, great, great voice, and you'll hear some of that later on today. Uh, we're also friends in the audience. We're going to talk about the Oktoberfest that's getting ready to happen at South Jackson Civic Center. And I also want to say thank you to Ann Rogers over at Junk and Disorderly for uh, supplying us with all of our gourds and pumpkins and things that that we have. So if you need yard art or table art. Go to Junk and Disorderly and, and pick up. I don't think I've ever seen a all, black one. Yeah, black gourds, multicolored gourds. Black gourd. hey, they've I they've got it all over. I did too. I thought you painted Well, we it. had some pink pumpkins last year, but I didn't have any pink paint this year because we painted. And look at this sweet little guy. Isn't that great? I love that. They're so artistic. Yeah. So. Uh, and natural. Go to Junk and Disorderly. Check them out. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else going uh, on? Just, but I'm, there's always something going on. What's going on? This, are we having anything this weekend? No. Well, Tullahoma is so. winding up the season. The high, Tullahoma High School, they were off last week. Now, who they play? Well, we, <clears throat> we're going to Giles County right. uh, this week. It'll, it's an away game, mm -hmm. and then the last game will be with uh, – Hillwood, no Maplewood. Here mm -hmm. will be the last game next weekend. Right, and the Wildcats do they still have a shot at the playoffs? Ah, uh, they're going to they're gonna need help. Yeah, okay. Long shot. Right. We've got to beat Maplewood. Right, and then we really need to beat Hillwood, not Hillwood, uh, Giles County as well. Although it's not a 
district game, when you get down to ties and stuff like that, it goes to wins and losses. Yeah. And so the one with the most wins and losses of non-district play is how some of those, some of that stuff is picked. Mm -hmm. So we really need to win both games. Maybe we will. Well, maybe so. Maybe right. so. Right. So I guess what we're going to do right now is take a quick commercial break. Pay attention to the commercials because without those people, we wouldn't be in front of you. We don't receive any money from anybody else. We have to go out and sell ourselves, just like the radio, <laughs> the newspaper, and everybody else has to do. do. That kid the older we get, the so, older we get, the harder it is. is. The harder the sale <laughs> is. Hey, life, everything in life is a sale. So. Dress for success. Act like you've been there before, before you show up. We'll be right back. It's football time in Tennessee, and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family. With six different locations, eight new car franchises, over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from, a certified collision center with lifetime paint guarantee, Russell Barnett Hometown Auto Rental, let our family exceed your expectations at the Russell Barnett Automotive family. And remember, why buy anywhere else? All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles, Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. That's fine. All right, folks, we're back. And the other night when uh, Becky Buller was in town, there was a reception given for the uh, sponsors of the series. And uh, the mayor, the first lady of Tullahoma, was there to present Becky with a proclamation from the city. So let's go to that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is BQ coming down the hall. The Becky Buller Band.
creative health consultants, Raymond James, Wesley Frazier, agent. Dave's covered some funeral home. They won't let us down until we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Sting McNabb, Russell Barnett, Light Tube. Alan, where are you? There. Alan Keckritz is with Mid-State Piano Gallery, and he is a fine musician himself, our piano tuner tech, and we're just so glad you're here. I'm sorry you're not feeling well, but thanks for making the effort to be here. Light Tube, Channel 6 The Link, my husband John Gray, who's one of the links <laughs> and one of the P-heads of P-head Productions, McMurrs, 3TM, Tulloma Lock and Security, Drain Masters, Squad One Extinguisher, Cheryl Pest Control, Holiday Inn Express, and of course, we're grateful to the State of Tennessee and the Arts Commission for support, the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, the City of Tullahoma, and the Walmart Foundation. So we are very grateful. In addition to those sponsors, we are very blessed to have businesses in the community that give our membership special discounts in their stores. So we're grateful for those, and we're also grateful for our season subscribers. It really helps to have the subscription sold so we can go about planning our season and hoping that we're going to attract more and more people in. Blossom is here representing the Mitchell Museum, which is open for your perusal, and we thank you, Blossom. Awesome for that. All right, at this time, I have the privilege of introducing the First Lady of Tullahoma, <laughs> Evelyn Curley, who is representing her husband, my classmate, Lane Curley. Evelyn has a special presentation to make. Becky, would you come over, please? I just wanted to welcome you and your band to Tullahoma, and thank you for continuing the great tradition of music on our stage. We're so glad to have you here. It's a special day for us, but it's also a special day for you. I'm going to read this to you. The City of Tullahoma Certificate of Recognition presented to the Mickey Bueller Band on behalf of the 18,655 citizens that call Tullahoma home and by the authority vested in Lane as Mayor of Tullahoma, I now proclaim in recognition of the Becky Bueller Band performance and reception Today, Saturday, October 14th, is Becky Bueller Band Day in Tullahoma. Oh, <laughs> I've never had a day. <laughs> it's Band Day. I've had many days, but none of them ever been at the band. <laughs> is that a first? It is. Well, yeah. first of many to come. So, again, thank you. We're, for Becky is a great representative of Coffee County, of a Minnesota girl who found her way to Tennessee, and we're so thrilled. Thank you, Jeff, for keeping me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all very much. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs but only he's paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <laughs> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right, no employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this boy, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit, Tullahoma, and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. 
When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. We're back and I have now live and in person, <laughs> the real Miss Fran Gray, and she's here for South Jackson Civic Center to talk about a few things. And the first thing you want to talk about is Oktoberfest. Yes, thank you, John. You're welcome. We are thrilled to announce our inaugural Oktoberfest at South Jackson Civic Center. It's coming up very soon, October 28th. This is a free event, and we are going to have lots of fun, rain or shine, on the grounds of South Jackson, mm -hmm. also known as Jackson's Square Park and the event starts at noon our vendors will be set up and ready to go we still have plenty of vendor space but we are having the first Oktoberfest in Tullahoma and we are very grateful to Cherokee Distributing Company and Old Shed and George Dickel for providing libations for us. Libations? That's right. Here, In pull the, that back a little bit closer to you. To me, there you all go. Right. Yes. How's that? There you go. Now okay. I can see it. Good. We have the Mountaintop Polka Band coming from North Carolina to provide authentic polka music. Um We're, Papa. Um Papa. We will. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what about Um Mama? Well, Umama will be on the stage, too. I think she plays the squeeze box. Really? Uh -huh. All right. I think I saw a picture of an accordion player, a female. And so we're really excited. They are a well-versed uh, group in festivals, and they're going to bring a lot of fun and excitement to our stage. We will have contests during the day. There will be a yule <laughs> yodeling contest. I don't yodel. I yell, but I don't yodel. Right? You, you yodel all right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that contest uh, will be during the day. We will have all of our uh, contests announced there on stage. We have a wiener dog costume contest. Bring your dachshunds or a dachshund look-alike con uh, dog <laughs> down and put them in costume. We will have a children's costume contest and a donut eating contest. Wow. For adults, we have a brat eating contest and a a Stein hoisting contest. <laughs> so it's just going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A polka dancing contest. So we, we ask y'all to come out. Of course, this is family friendly and pet friendly. And we'll, That's great. we'll start at noontime and go until 10 that evening. Ooh. We will have a lot of party. food. Yes, a lot of good times. Uh, so we, we uh, want y'all to come out. We, I believe we're having a cornhole contest or a cornhole tournament. So come out and enjoy lots of good food, and we'll have some crafts. Uh, we have a, a children's activity with uh, face painting and rock painting. You can take one and leave one. Uh, oh. I was uh, straightening up the steps around South Jackson the other day, and I thought, what is that shiny? I thought it was a gum wrapper. Lo and behold, it was a silver rock. Someone had left us a message on a little rock. So uh, we have lots of nice rocks around the building Very now. Good. Messages Very good. from people. So y'all can come out and paint your own rock and leave it and, and uh, take one with you. So we again, we are grateful to Cherokee, George Dickel, Old Shed, McMurs, a big sponsor. Kat will be there with her uh, DJ equipment, and she will play when the band takes breaks. Good. And we also are thrilled to have Marcus coming. K Mars is going to do a little uh, set with us. I asked Kat if he was going to rap in German. Who knows? He just might. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Not me. <laughs> no Deutsch here. No Deutsch. Okay. Uh, we have 93.9 The Duck, Citizens Tri County Bank, NAS, American City Bank. Sundrop, Lynchburg Winery, Resource Manufacturing, Russell Barnett 
Automotive Family and Coca-Cola and Cubic now a sponsor. So it's going to be a load of fun and we Very hope a, a beautiful fall day at South hope Jackson so. Civic Center. So we want everyone to come out and have a big time with us at Oktoberfest. Our visitor, first. The first. This, this is the inaugural. Yes. Be there and make history with us. That's right. And uh, we're also having lots of events coming up this fall. I did want to mention, in addition to the Oktoberfest, we have in rehearsal right now Sister Act. Sister Act is coming <coughs> the 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th to South Jackson. A lot of great voices, local singers and performers, and we've got a lot of new faces on stage Good. and some wonderful veteran performers with us. And we're very excited about that show. Those tickets are available online and in the office. And as Peggy mentioned earlier, we have the return coming November 4th, uh, the second show of our performing arts series, and very excited about that. All you Beatles fans, all you second and third generation of Beatles <laughs> fans, come on out and sing along with the Fab Four, and, and it is a they wonderful They do a good show. job. Yes, we've had them here before, and they're a good, great. Really good job. So uh, they look like them, sound like them, move like them, groove like them, so uh, come out to see the return. Also in November, we have our Young Artist Showcase, and this is a wonderful afternoon of music provided by mostly teenagers who are classically trained and that's coming up on November 19th. So we, we just have lots happening. We have rehearsals starting for the Happy Elf, our packed show for December, and it just goes on and on. Uh, lots of great things. Back to Oktoberfest, if you would like to be a vendor, we still have spaces available for Oktoberfest vendors. Our booths are $60. And if you need electricity, that's an additional $25. So we invite you to come out and have a lot of fun with us that day. And you know, we're always looking for volunteers at South Jackson. South Jackson is a volunteer-based organization like so many great ones here in our community. Right. And we are very blessed to have a big host of volunteers who help us do all kinds of things from building maintenance, yard work, to uh, I think Andrew, yep. there you go. Thank you. There it uh, is. We Come need, to it. We need ushers. We need committee members to help us uh, do our programming, to help us select plays and perform in shows. We're still looking for technical support for lighting and sound. So if you are interested and have a propensity for technical support of theater, please call us at 455-5321. We do need more help in our technical aspects of performance. We need even something as simple as running a computer program for a slideshow for this for the screen for ads where the sponsors are shown you know before and after shows and stuff like that yes. and, and it's a really good way you know you don't have to be a performer and you don't have to a lot of people would like to be around the activity but don't really feel like they're a stage person, they're an on-stage personality or anything like that. There's so many other ways that you can be involved uh, to help these programs get put on in a proper manner and you can be right in the middle of all the action. That's right. It takes so many people to make something mm -hmm. happen. It does. Uh, Peggy Burton is our tireless leader in performing arts and you've been a great supporter on stage and behind the camera and everywhere. It, it just takes a village, it really does. It takes our whole community. This is a community-based performing arts center. It is. It's an historic place. And we're so excited that the ground has been broken and we're gonna start working on our new parking lot. Yep. I can hardly wait. That, that work starts October 23rd and we're gonna start with the south side and work our way around. And we're told by our leadership it's going to be ready for springtime. There so you go. It's very exciting. Y'all come see us at South Jackson. Come volunteer. Uh, call us. Support the arts. And we thank you so much. If nothing else, send a check. We'll be right back <laughs> after these messages. <laughs> Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors.
Neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip, and then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Conversations with John and Pat, with John and Pat, with John and Pat. Hello everyone, I'm John Rickman. And this is Pat Welch and John, we are here today for segment 65 of the Conversations 65. with John and Pat. That's when I graduated from high school, yeah. 65. 65. That was a good year. It was a good year. It was good. Had a good time. I, had, I liked high school a whole lot. But we're going to talk about some sports. Most school people like school. I loved school. Yeah, I did loved too. it. I couldn't see why people wouldn't like it. But uh, this this little song, I'm I'm going back in the archives a little bit of my memory and pulling out some of these songs that I wrote. And this was a parody. I think we talked about that one other time. You know about using a tin that already was there, and I added put words to it. Not everybody, as far as time knows, what a parody is, John. I'm pretty impressed. Well, thank you, Pat. Here it is. 26 years of my life I gave to pick guitar in Nashville. 26 years of my life I gave to be a star in Nashville. I'm a going there where the money's free. Music Square is a calling me. Oh, what a big star I will be there in Music City. I'm going to make my debut at Opryland when I get to Nashville. Get me a bus and my very own band when I get to Nashville. I'm going to set up shop on Music Row, giving lessons to old Hank Snow. You just watch this old country boy go when I get to Nashville. name, write a hit song about an old freight train, they'll hang my picture in the Hall of Fame when I get to Nashville, I'll sing it, oh give me a home where the swimming pools roam, and the money grows on trees, and all the girls want to be squeezed. 
never heard that song before, Pat. I've heard parts of it. You know, <laughs> Jimmy, you know, you noticed at the song, a lot of those people, of course, Dolly Parton's married. I'm a mar I'm married. Uh, uh, you got Blissfully. to, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm not sure about Dolly, but yes, I am on this end of things. And then uh, Hank Snow is no longer with us. He passed away several years ago. So a lot of the, that was written a long time ago. And uh, like you can tell, I struggled remembering the words, but I think I got through it. You didn't have to quit, John. I didn't have to quit. Yeah. So that was a good thing. But uh, what are we talking about today, Pat? Well. The, the music certainly doesn't provide much of a segue. However, not every song does. No, we've had some. <laughs> <laughs> we have had some good programs come out of a non-segue, and today will be one of them. We hope. Um, UTSI has been a great, uh, made great contributions to uh, Tullahoma, provided great jobs, and. and uh, it's been a, a great kind of showcase for our area and for the state. But not many people realize that UTSI has a sports background. And I did not realize that until yesterday at a barbecue at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. <laughs> I found out that in 1977, UTSI had a rugby club team that engaged in battle with the University of Tennessee, MTSU, Vanderbilt, and Auburn. Wow. And uh, it, it, uh, it got its footing in a, uh, a local uh, establishment that has late night hours. And it was frequented by three or four graduate students uh, seeking some relief from their studies. And they found Several look like uh, past athletes or athletes <laughs> that could be <laughs> described either way in the establishment and ask them if they'd ever played rugby. Not only nobody had played rugby, nobody had heard of rugby. But as they described it, several felt sort of like, like football. It's kind of like football without helmets. <laughs> uh, and uh, which would have fit these boys really well. <laughs> the problem was none of them. Uh, would have been termed at that point, nor would they have accepted the term of being a rocket scientist. <laughs> so it made a, a really and kind of incredible combination. And I don't, I guess, uh, these in these club sports, you don't even have to be enrolled because these boys definitely were not enrolled. Philip put up that. This is from 1977 Tullahoma News, and I believe UTSI was in striped. Uh, jerseys, rugby shirts, and the gentleman on the left, it looks like he's signaling touchdown in American football, is Bill Hain. He was a year or two older than I, and maybe what made him legal was that his brother Joe was in charge of facilities at uh, UTSI, and, he's, and I believe he still is. Uh, <laughs> The gentleman in the middle who's jumping up is Tim Stubberfield, who is uh, with the fire department and a great, uh, and he's also a county commissioner. And the the smaller guy on the right in the striped shirt is a actual grad student. So he he had real ties to UT, UTSI. This game they lost to MTSU 16 to 14, but they beat that year. They beat Vanderbilt and they beat Auburn. Hmm. How about the second? Uh, Piece. That is also from 1977, and I believe to the far left is Bobby Nichols, who uh, has been in Tullahoma a long time. And then there's two guys on the right, <coughs> and those are, those are the, our friends, the Bank brothers, Banks brothers. Kenny is the, the furthest to the uh, left of the two, and Randy is on the far right. And if anybody will see uh, their legs, they needed Michael Jordan length shorts at that time. They both a um, little bit thin in the leg department. <laughs> and uh, they are highly competitive people. And uh, I think um, they were probably these graduate students were probably surprised at uh, the, the uh, lengths that those boys would would uh, go to to, to try to make 
<laughs> UTSI victorious, but neither one of them has ever been accused of being rocket scientists at the same time. Uh, Pat, that's an ugly thing to say. About well, uh, John, nor you or I would be described as a <laughs> rocket scientist. You're correct. You're correct. <laughs> rocket scientist. But, it, but it's great that we live in a community that has one. One thing that I noticed moving from uh, where I was to Tullahoma, uh, the, the, the diversity in the community. Uh, people at UTSI, AEDC, the Air Force people who come in, they bring a lot of different ideas and uh, uh, life experiences to Tullahoma that we're not familiar with sometimes. Correct. And oh, one, uh, can and I that, tell a story on Tim Tuffle, most Tuffle of, Field? Sure. I was, I was a coach teacher at uh, East Middle School, East Junior High School at this time, and uh, one day I, I was a physical education teacher and we were into wrestling during that time. And uh, I got a kid, child came over to uh, the, my gym and said, uh, Mr. Rickman, uh, Mr. Saunders, Charlie Saunders, and Tim Stubblefield would like to wrestle. And uh, Mr. Saunders was the he was uh, a te history teacher, and uh, I student taught under him in 1975 <laughs> in the old East Building, the and, old old high school. And building. Tim, I suppose, was a ninth grader at that time. I really don't know. It might have been an eighth, but I know probably this, a ninth. This, we're grader. still back in history then, because that'd been either 77 probably or now, no. Here's, here's a teacher. Yeah. Here's a teacher and a student has been in the classroom, and somebody has said, Mr. Saunders, probably to him, I bet you couldn't beat Tim. Tim was strong as an ox. He was. As a child, a youngster, he was just, ter he was strong. And uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. I he was probably on. bigger than Charlie in the ninth I, grade, too. Well, they, but anyway, he came, they came in, all the students gathered around the mats, <laughs> and I had my whistle, and you know, I was, I was the referee. And I made sure that, uh, that things went on without any problems. So Mr. Saunders and, and Tim, uh, began to wrestle, and next thing you know, Mr. Saunders is on his back, and Tim's about ready to, uh, you know, pin him. And I and I think, you know, this is too quick. I can't let Tim beat him so quickly. So I said, uh, -uh no, no, that's an illegal hole. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stand you back up. We're gonna stand you back up. Start over. <laughs> well, well, one at a time to Tim. A mulligan. Gave him a mulligan. Wrestling mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> Tim had him down again, and that was settled after that. And so uh, Tim, Tim uh, beat Mr. Sonner. Now, now uh, I don't know if things like that can go on today, but probably things were not. Different yeah. back yeah. at that time, and we sure had a good time. And uh, <laughs> we laugh. I laugh about that today, and I don't know what Mr. Saunders does. <laughs> but uh, flinches probably. <laughs> <laughs> but Tim Stubblefield, we lo love you, old buddy, and uh, all those people who played uh, rugby back that time. Uh, Don, we, not many people know that UTSI was involved in interscholastic athletics at a high end in 1977, and not many people know that Tim Stubblefield whipped Charlie Saunders in your, in your <laughs> PE class. But that probably wraps up segment 65 of the conversation with John and Pat, and we're so desirous of coming back because we have more stories to tell. Thank you all. <laughs> Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. Here at Manchester Funeral Home, we know the importance of living and working in our local community because it's those families who we serve during their time of need honorably. We believe in supporting local business and offer only 100% Batesville caskets, the best in the industry and a driver of our local economy. If you want straightforward and fair pricing while working with the people you know, choose Manchester Funeral Home, serving your community since 1932. And pre-planning and pre-funding can be the best gift you ever leave your loved ones. Call us to pre-arrange. Manchester Funeral Home, our family caring for your family since 1932. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play. <laughs> What you wear, how you dance, or even what direction light takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. How long has
has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. All right, folks, uh, we were discussing Becky Buller, and uh, I had an interview with Becky uh, about two weeks ago. She came in and spent about 30 minutes with me, and just, wow, what an incredible young woman, what a talented young woman, and uh, we're going to play that interview, part of that interview for you right now, and let you get the backside story or, of Becky Buller and uh, how she got to where she is, and it's, it, it's an interesting tale. I'm so excited today to have my my friend and the incomparable singer, instrumentalist, Miss Becky Buller on the show today, and uh, it always makes me happy when she's here. Welcome. Thank you Becky. for having me back. You doing well today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Becky's just coming back from the IBMA mm -hmm. Award Show. Yep, the International Bluegrass Music Association. And uh, Becky was a, was a mm -hmm. presenter this year and was up for several awards. Last mm -hmm. year, she was, uh, what, Female Vocalist of the Year? Yeah. And violinist. In 2016, yeah. And a fiddler, fiddle Fid player. Fiddler. Fiddler. It's bluegrass music. So yeah, it's bluegrass fiddler. fiddler. Yeah, and, and, and the, the ironic thing is when I got up there to thank everybody, I, I thanked my violin teachers. Because <laughs> I, I didn't really have a fiddle teacher. We right. didn't have anybody in my area. I'm from right. Minnesota. and uh, But we had some wonderful violin teachers that I studied with. And then I learned bluegrass along the way playing with my parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Becky was the first female to ever win that award. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. And uh, how wonderful and just what, what we want to do before we play is just get a little bit of for a lot of you people might not know <laughs> Becky and know her background and the history of how she got where she is, which is at the top of bluegrass right now. <laughs> uh, how did it all start for you, Becky? I was born <laughs> in Minnesota. <laughs> you were you were. At that point, you were probably what two and a half feet tall. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I, uh, I I grew up in in uh, South Central Minnesota, playing music with my parents and and my brother and and uh, we just we we played music all over Minnesota, Northern Iowa, got as far as the geographical center of South Dakota. And what and what yeah. type of music was that? <laughs> bluegrass music. Was it bluegrass? Yeah, okay. my parents got interested in bluegrass music when I was about five years old, and then they started a band with Gordy and Roxy Schultz. Gordy played banjo and Roxy played the bass. Mom played guitar and my dad played the mandolin. And and when I was about eight years old, I, I had been taking piano lessons. They started me on that when I was five, but. I decided I wanted to sing in their band, and they said, well, you have to play something. It's bluegrass. Everybody <laughs> everybody. If, everybody plays and sings, and, and now you see bands where you might have someone that's singing and not playing, but it's usually, it's, it's still the exception rather than the norm, and so I said, okay, you don't have a fiddle. I'll learn how to play fiddle, and so really I picked up the fiddle so I could sing in their band and that's how I've approached the, the whole thing the, the fiddle ever since really I I, I, um, I need to learn more tunes <laughs> I really do <laughs> but I've always been interested in how the fiddle works in a, in a band situation and backing up a song and which makes sense because I, I write a lot right. write a lot of songs and and um, I love singing. So well, and, and Becky, <laughs> Becky also is going to play today for us not only the fiddle but a, mm -hmm. the guitar and the banjo. Mm -hmm. And I was asking her, is that abnormal for someone in bluegrass to play more than one instrument? And that you say no. No, it's a usually everybody plays at least two or three things, and um, you know. And sings. And sings, and uh, bluegrass music is very DIY. You, you do just about everything yourself, and, and it, I, I'm sort of half joking, but kind of not. Um, you know, bluegrass, in, in bluegrass music, you, you're usually 
your own publicist and a lot of times people record their own albums and they do their own graphic design and um, in addition to playing all the instruments, singing all the parts, writing the songs. And fixing um, the bus. Fixing the bus is really helpful <laughs> if you have, you can, you know, you're a diesel mechanic and, um, and if you have your CDL so you can drive the bus. There you go. Yeah. So do it all. I'm missing a few things. <laughs> yeah. Do it all. Yeah, huh? you do it all. Do it all. And you, you have a yeah. wonderful husband. Yes, Jeff Haley. And uh, his hometown's Manchester, Tennessee, and that's where we live. So it's now it's my, my adoptive hometown. Right, and a beautiful mm -hmm. daughter, Romy. <laughs> yes, yeah. And Romy's? Romy is four. Going on 24. Uh, she liked to think so, yes. <laughs> yeah, she's so funny. She says that right now she's just writing songs for her family. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, I told her very seriously, well, that's where it starts, and then then you start writing for money, and then it's hopefully. all downhill. It's all <laughs> yeah. downhill from yeah. there. Yeah, that's, yeah hopefully. that's what I found hopefully out in 50 years. Hopefully you're writing for money. <laughs> most of it's guts and glory. Nah, most of it, yeah. it's not money. Yeah. Uh, it's passion is and what you, you do it for. You just can't escape it. Yeah once, you, yeah, once you start, you can't quit. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of the writing side of it, uh, about what age did you start sort of seriously trying to make that happen? Seriously, sometime in high school. Yeah, and, uh, and, and uh, the first time I remember pitching a song was when I was about, I was 15 or 16, and I pitched a song to the Dry Branch Fire Squad. And um, they they were really, really prominent. They're, they still perform a lot, and they're definitely legends in the bluegrass industry, but they were more prominent in the 80s, maybe early 90s. And, um, and I pitched a song, and Ron Thomason, who's the head of the Dry Branch Fire Squad, he was so nice, he wrote back to me. And, and he said, I really like this song, but I think it needs another verse. And for him to write back to me at all was incredible. Right. You know, I, oh, yeah. I, I learned later as I just, I got into pitching more and, you know, it's very often, you know, most of the time you don't hear back from an artist because they're just, they're so busy. They have so many people coming at them and, um, and it's just, it's just hard to get back to everyone. Um, Especially nowadays, when you have people coming at you from email and Facebook sure, and Twitter oh, sure, and, sure. and just all these different mediums, and it's just hard to keep up with it all. But he wrote back to me and, and, and told me it needed another verse. So I wrote that extra verse and I sent it back to him, and I didn't hear anything back from him the second time. But still, I just. Okay. I, that, yeah, that was okay. And uh, I, I just told this story on stage up in. Uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, because we did a show with the Dry Branch Fire Squad up there uh -huh. back in August, and and I I just thanked Ron again for doing that because that's part of why I'm doing what I am oh, today. Sure, sure. Because he wrote back to me because he took that time to write back to me and, and encourage me. Well, I'm how many cry. how many are, <laughs> I'm are there cry about are there it. other people out there? Doing Becky Buller songs. I mean, have you had yeah, cuts? Yeah, I, I, mean, I uh, have several. Yeah, I have. Um, Ricky Skaggs cut a, a co-write of mine, a, a song I wrote with Mark Simos and Lisa Ashman called "Music to My Ears," and it was the title cut of his record that came out in 2012. And I, apparently, he, Mark Simos had gotten the song to Ricky. 10 years before that, because we wrote the song a long, long time right. ago. Valerie recorded it when I was playing in Valerie her band. Smith, yeah. Valerie Smith and Liberty Pike. And, um, but I didn't, I didn't know that Ricky had the song and, until my friend and co-writer John Weisberger wrote to me and said, congrats on your Ricky Skaggs cut. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> yeah, all right. You've had uh, numerous people cut your, cut your songs, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Rhonda Vincent, uh, probably my most successful song in terms of, of being cut multiple times, uh, th that, that song is Fishers of Men, which is really just a simple a cappella song. I, I wrote it while I was in college at East Tennessee State, and Rhonda Vincent recorded it twice. And of course, she's the queen of bluegrass oh, music, yes. and a lot of people cover her. And um, so that, one, that one's been cut multiple times. But I, the, to me, you know you've made it as a, a songwriter in bluegrass music when you're walking through a festival in the middle of the night, nobody knows you, and you, I mean, it's dark, they can't see you, and you hear somebody doing your song, and you look in on the jam, and you don't know anybody in that jam, 
that to me that's like that's really that cool. means you've made it. Yeah, that's it's like listening. It's like hearing your song on an elevator. Yeah. Yeah. You know, once it gets yeah. to elevator music, folks. Right. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Might not pay anything, right. but it's good. Yep. Yep. Well, why don't you do something for us on the film? Okay. I'll we'll just play a little bit of Lather Breeches. When I first got down. Lay their britches. Lay their, yeah, it's like lay their britches down, boys. Lay their britches kind of, down. When I, when I first came down to East Tennessee State to go to school, um, and so I'm from Minnesota, and it's just, you know, a little bit different accent up there. And I, I uh, when I first got down to school, I ran into, um, let's see, Amanda Mathis. Got that right? I think I've got that right. Anyway, she was like top fiddler in the bluegrass program at the time, uh -huh. and then she—it was her last year of school that um, in '97 when I got there, and um, that's how she talked. She was from Kingston Springs, and when she when she played this tune, she called it "Lather Breeches," <laughs> and I just thought, "Oh, that's so interesting." <laughs> So I, I came to Tennessee to to study bluegrass music at East Tennessee State. I heard about it, the program, when I was 16, and and I was just excited that I could get credit for playing bluegrass music. Oh, yeah. And so I made, from that point on, that's where I was going. Oh, made plans to come down. To learn how to play lather <laughs> breeches. learn how to play lather breeches. And, well, but to learn, like, how to sing bluegrass correctly. I mean, this is the the cradle of, of, of the, the music, deal, yeah. where it came from, and, um, you know, in the Appalachian Mountains, learned how to say Appalachian instead of Appalachian. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, all that and, stuff. And, and the culture. And the shevel. culture that the yeah, shevel. <laughs> And the culture that the music comes from, that's important, too, because right. it's a different mix up in Minnesota. You've got all those Scandahoovians up there. Yeah, so it's, really, it's a little sure. different. <laughs> Even though we have a thriving bluegrass love, community in Minnesota, um, it's still, it's just a little different. So sure it, is. It, it, it was uh, as much a part of my education to be in the area, getting to know the people and the culture as it was to be at the school right. and studying. So anyway, lather breeches. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Bowler. That's pretty incredible. Thank you. Uh, looking from the outside in to that presentation, when someone plays that song like you did, are, are there liberties taken on, on notes or, or every time is it played by everyone who plays Leather Britches, is it pretty much exactly the way it was written? Uh, um, uh, in bluegrass music, no, because it's bluegrass is all about showing off and <laughs> uh, and trying to uh, to one up the next fiddler with crazy licks and stuff. Now, in Irish music, um, which is in in part where the bluegrass comes from, you know, mm -hmm. it's one of the components that came together in Bill Monroe's music. 
you know, to form bluegrass. So in Irish music, or, or even Canadian fiddling, they, um, they all play the same notes. Like you could say to me as an outsider looking in, you know, to that world, because I don't really know that world at all, but um, it's like saying, oh, let's play real number 482, and everybody knows exactly how to play it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's more, and, and old time music is that way too. Um, it's more about the groove and the melody, and it's more, with old time music, it's more about dancing. But bluegrass is more about showing off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No wonder I like bluegrass music. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is the fiddle your favorite instrument? That's so hard. It just depends on the day. Depends on the day. It really does. I, I, I mean, I guess it, I guess it would be my favorite because it's my, it's my main instrument. Okay. Now I would say it. Um, I, I dog paddle on the rest of them. I feel okay, like. Okay, <laughs> so so you also play guitar and banjo. I Which do. one of those two do you like the best? How about for right for this this moment? How about the banjo? The banjo. Yeah. Okay. Can I well, get why don't banjo? we have a banjo song? Let me okay? get the banjo. Becky's gonna go get her banjo, and we're gonna have a banjo song. shelter has served Tullahoma dogs for nearly 30 years. Now you can help us build a bigger and better no-kill shelter. Your tax-deductible gift is matched dollar for dollar. So come on, bark it forward and donate now to have your tax-deductible gift matched. Make your check payable to the COT Shelter Building Fund and go to TullahomaTN.gov to see all the unique gifts available for your generosity. For more details you can call City Hall at 455-2648. so fortunate to have gotten a second interview with uh, Becky Buller who was so sensational at South Jackson Civic Center and now all over the United States and other countries. This is our second interview with John. I want to ask you a question. You know, guitars are about, you know, you know brand names. This is Martin mm -hmm. and, and Gibson and Gallagher and Taylor and are banjos that way? Are there specific big names oh, in yeah. banjos? Oh yeah, yeah. There's um, some wonderful, wonderful banjo makers out there now. Um, and like with guitars, you have a lot of of, of boutique um, banjo makers out there now, just like you have a lot of boutique guitar builders. And this one is actually built just down the road in Cheville. Tennessee. In Cheville? Yeah, I would say Shelbyville, but that's because I'm no, no, not no. from around here. No. In Cheville. Cheville. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this is built by D.P. Hopkins Banjos. So that's Paul Hopkins and his son David. Really? And um, this is the only claw hammer model that they make. And uh, it's, a, it's a signature model for me, which I'm really, really thrilled and, and honored the that Becky they Buller? would do this. Yeah, oh. yeah. So if you want a, a claw hammer D.P. Hopkins, this is what you get. A, a well, Becky Buller model. Thank you. Yeah, so that's and the I floor love the model, sound of huh? it. Yeah. <laughs> I love the sound of it. It's got um, it's got more punch. A lot of times, um, I mean, there are all sorts of different kinds of claw hammer banjos with different sounds, bigger pots, um, um, you know, tone ring versus no tone ring. A lot of them don't have a metal tone ring inside. This one does, and it gives it a little bit more punch, which I like uh, in, in our context because most of what we do is is bluegrass music, and and we're just it, we're just different than an old time band, so it's it's nice to to have that little bit more punch right, to my right. banjo. Yeah, but they build a beautiful instrument, and um, 
I love working with them. Do you know Do you know Don Jones that lives here in town, guitar Don. player? I do. He, He's he built He built the banjo out of a wooden bowl. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, he loves messing around with banjos yeah. as well, and he'll, he'll build a banjo out of just about anything. Banjos are very in this season. Yeah, they yeah. certainly are. They really are. They're they're very popular. Okay, so uh, give us your favorite, or, or give us a banjo sure. song that you enjoy playing. Well, I'm going to sing this one for you. So most of what I do with the band, uh, when I pick up the Clawhammer banjo, I'll usually pick it up for one song per set, and it's usually a singing song. Um, and this is one that I wrote with uh, Vicki Simmons of the New Coon Creek Girls, which for those of you who are bluegrass nerds, you know exactly who that is. Uh, they're, they're very prominent, I guess, in the maybe the 90s, early, late 80s, early 90s, yeah, that, right. that, um, that time frame. And um, uh, Vicki plays bass with the group, and um, she's a fantastic songwriter. I really enjoyed having spent a, a day with her writing. It was a very productive day. And uh, we wrote this one. It's a true story about a gal from Harlan County, Kentucky. Her name was Maggie Bailey, and they called her the queen of the mountain bootleggers. Becky Buller. <laughs> She's gone, long gone. <laughs> Lord, we love her still. And Lord, we love her still. Yeah. That's that's fabulous. Thank you. You're fabulous. Oh, you know thank that. You. Thank you. You just Likewise. are. You just are. I tell you what, you make me smile. Oh, thank you. Make me smile. Thank you. And uh, so now we've have we have the fiddle. Time we have the, the banjo. And now we need to hear a guitar song All right. from Becky Buller. All right. What type of guitar is that? This is a 1931 Gibson LO. Wow. Yep. So. How does something stay that pristine? 
Since 1931. Well, I think it's had some some things had some body swapped work. out on it. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, but one thing that hasn't changed, and I love this, and um, you can't really see it very well, but there is a, a little tag here from the music store that it was originally bought at at Fife and Nichols in Hollywood, California. Wow. I just think that's so cool. Isn't that, yeah, yeah that is cool. I'm so glad they left that on there. <coughs> that is cool. So I got this at the uh, same place that I got my fiddle um, at Universal Chevrolet in Cleveland, Georgia. So they, um, the man who. Buy a car, get an instrument. Right. And <laughs> the man who runs the car lot also deals in instruments and uh, plays mandolin. And so he would deal in instruments upstairs. And they used to have a festival on the back lot. And, and it went for right. several years. It was a really good festival. And um, I came in to play it with Val and um, came home with a couple of new instruments. <laughs> there you go. But I've been really happy. I love my fiddle, and, and that's been my voice for 15, and what's 16 your years name? now. Well, Leopold <laughs> is his name. <laughs> and I named him after uh, Hugh Jackman's character in Kate and Leopold. Oh. I saw that movie about the same time that I got the fiddle. And, Leopold. Uh, yeah, but that was a lately, good Yeah, lately we've been calling him the old man. So, so uh, Colin Willis, who played Dobro with Darren and Brooke Aldridge, I, I played with them for a couple seasons. And, and Colin nicknamed him, my fiddle the old man because he's over 200 years old. And he gets cranky, you know? I mean, just... Yeah. He, 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 it's okay, you know. I, f I feel like it, it's all right because he's that old. It, he, it's all right if he's a little cranky. Now I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask this crazy <laughs> question. I know the Leopold of Kate and Leopold might yeah. have been 200 years old. That character yeah. is your fiddle 200 years yeah, old. Yeah, it was built in either late 1700s or early 1800s. There's nothing inside um, to tell us exactly when it was built, but um, just from the craftsmanship and everything, they. They know it's very fine grain, and it's it's had a lot of life. He's got a, a lot of a lot of interesting passions stories and scars, you could tell. and yes, yeah. you can tell a lot of stories. But they do know that it's a German fiddle, Steiner Steiner mm -hmm. model fiddle. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of that, I saw a movie not too long ago that I'd never seen before called The Red Violin. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah what it's a, a powerful movie. film. Watch, watch that movie if you ever get an opportunity to watch mm -hmm. it. Okay, what are you going to do for us on I'm the I'm going to try to play one that's fairly new. I don't think I've played it on okay. the show with you Great. before. So we've just, um, our, our family has lost several friends here in the last month. And so this kind of speaks to that a little bit. It's called Time We Are Given.
pull it out too. Pull it out. If only I had more hands. You know, Becky, I, I just really don't know what to say. That's that's one of the most beautiful things I've heard, and I don't know when. Oh, thank you, folks. That is that's genius at work right there. Uh, you know, I've written for 50 years. I never even could never even come close to something <laughs> like that. It was inspirational. It was very touching, very true, and very beautifully done. Thank uh, that's, you. That's just. I, that's, I don't know what else to say. It's uh, that's just inspiring. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, and, and as are you. And every time that we have an opportunity, or I have an opportunity to spend with Becky, is just exciting for me. Uh, like I said earlier, she makes me laugh, but at the same time, she makes me feel deep, deeper than I can feel by myself. So uh, that's a that's something that's wonderful that you can do to a person. And thank you for your talent and your time and your friendship. Oh, likewise. Okay. <laughs> thank you for listening. Yeah, and come back to see us when you can. Absolutely. And please be Always safe. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having be me on. Be safe on the road. And uh, love that lovely little Romy for <laughs> us. And, yeah. and uh, yeah. Jeff is a wonderful man. He's a lucky man. And you're a lucky girl for having him in your life. I am. I have, uh, I have a wonderful family here yes, in Tennessee. Do. Yes, you do. All the mm -hmm. success in the world to Thank you, my you. dear. Thank you. Until next time, okay? Bye. Folks, until next time, thanks for watching. At the time, maybe you were just building a bridge, a business, or a community. Maybe you were simply working for a home or a better tomorrow. At the time, you served out of duty and love of country. But in that time, we see a legacy created, an American dream lived. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. There is no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. And choosing the right seat for your little one's age and size will take you down the road to safer travels. How can I ever thank you enough? Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. TV land and thank you camera gentlemen for putting a good sharp clear contrasting colorful picture on the screen last week we touched on the drive-in uh, cafes and restaurants around town and I've had several people to come to us and say hey I remember old moon's drive-in and twin oaks that you mentioned and some others well I thought I'd Step it up a little, little bit and give you some information, as I recall, about some other eateries here in Tahoe. If you'll remember the old King Hotel that was uh, established in the teens or early 20s, <clears throat> and they had a big, big dining room on the first floor, and the kitchen was at the center of the back part of the King Hotel, and they had wonderful meals. I know it's, uh, well, my friend George Book, better known as Fatty Book, was a, a clerk there, desk clerk at the King Hotel, and he loves to eat. I don't know how many times a day he ate, but there were several times, and the King Hotel was real, real popular. Uh, the um, menu was extended and it was really great and usually on a Saturday afternoon or evening or a Sunday afternoon or evening they had an orchestra 
that played there at the uh, King Hotel in the dining room. And you could enjoy the music or you could, could dance. In there. I think they were called the Purple Dons and uh, have vo vocalists there. Oh, G.C. King Jr. sang and they had a great time. And of course, sad to say, that hotel was raised in 1968 and it no longer is there. But there were other famous eateries here. For example, Mrs. Kersey, who had a bed and breakfast at the corner of uh, 101 South Atlantic Street. And it was a great place to, to eat. And there were others that were really, really good uh, bread and breakfast. And now there's so many wonderful uh, places to dine out that I, sometimes on the weekend, I don't think anybody ever cooks or eats at home, but there's wonderful restaurants and cafes and places where you can drive up. For example, the uh, seafood places like, uh, like uh, and they're not, uh, not the only ones, but they specialize in seafood, like Captain D's and the Red Lobster. They're one place on, on north of Jackson Street, and the others that are plentiful on North Jackson Street. For example, Western Sizzler uh, on uh, next door to the uh, uh, credit union there. And they, they have now where they have specials for seniors and uh, have breakfast that are real good uh, there. And uh, Ruby Tuesdays and Applebee's and Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know what they specialize in, but it's always good. And many of them have uh, buffets and salad bars. It's Ponderosa. Anthony's on Maple Street and Emil's on East Lincoln Street and just so many wonderful places to dine, dine out. And the Downtown Cafe and Butler's Pantry and uh, many, many. And everybody ought to try one of each so they can decide which one is their specialty. And we uh, would like to remind you that We've run out of time, but this is not the end of the story because there's a whole lot more to come. I hope you'll be with us and watch this next, next week. Thank you and have a good day. first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and news makers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Okay, Peggy, we're back and uh, had a lot of interesting stuff today. Becky Buller is just, I know it, it might, it, we might have given y'all a whole lot of Buller today, but uh, it, I feel like it, it was, was worth it. It, it was yeah, well worth it. It, it was worth it. And, you know, we'll have Becky back at South Jackson and do yourself a favor the next time she's around uh, anywhere, but particularly at South Jackson, make sure you get an opportunity to go see her because on stage she is at the top of the game and very 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 professional and the people that she has playing with her are just as professional as yes, she they is are. so I'm what thinking fun about the Oktoberfest and uh, what a nice thing for South Jackson to do yeah free event and the first time I'm hoping it'll it'll the weather will be pretty and the weather will be pretty and uh, people just have the time of their life 
they have things for kids. They have things for every age group. Yeah, for sure. So for I sure. encourage everybody Family to come. It's event. free. You can't, you know. Can't beat free. I think you can buy a few things when you get yeah, there. Yeah, well, yeah, you need to buy yeah. some stuff. But uh, the vendors will be there with sausages and brats and all that, that German food. You um, got pa, your lederhosen. Are you going to wear your lederhosen? I don't wear a hosen. <laughs> you don't wear a hosen? I don't wear a hosen. <laughs> I, I'll do some hosen, but I don't wear a hosen. You get hosed once I'll in a while. i get hosed every now and then. <laughs> As we all As do, we, I would imagine. On occasion. Matter of fact, Halloween's coming up. Be safe. I can remember one night my mom and dad left my brother and I at home, and they went out on Halloween, and we gave all the candy away. And we didn't know what to do, so we got in the freezer and got some ice cream out and took spoons. And whenever they'd come, we'd throw a spoon of ice cream oh in their God. bag. When that <laughs> ran out, we got up on top of the house with a garden hosing. And whoever <laughs> and whoever <laughs> said they were going to do a trick got hosed. I guarantee oh, you. We got man. in a lot of trouble Halloween for that. in my day was <laughs> different than it is now. <laughs> it's all different. Be yeah. safe out there, folks. And uh, thank you so much for watching the, watching what we do. We appreciate you and please go by and thank our sponsors as well. We'll see you next time.